Hi, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are going to do things a little bit differently, um, just because we're in such a crazy time and we wanted to have an opportunity to kind of hear from you guys across the state and kind of get a sense of what's happening with your programs. So, um, We, um, I'm going to start with some updates. Uh, I've got some good information to share with everybody um, on the FISP side. And then um, after that, we're going to kind of uh, go around and, and get some, some feedback and, and updates from on the call. So I'm excited. We've got, um, we've got a good uh, group of participants um, from around the state and multi-agency. Um, so with that, we'll just dive right in. Um, Sorry, let me get my slide movement here. So I wanted to um, provide a quick update on Florida Weed Wrangle Week, which was February 24th through March 1st. Um, our numbers are a little underreported just because this was right before everything kind of hit the fan. Um, so, but we do have um, over half of our events uh, reporting in. Um, we had over 200 volunteers working on over 16 plant species um, and removing an estimated 4,000 pounds of plant material. Um, and that doesn't include uh, some of the, the species that were listed by STEM. So with that, it's even more um, control work that was done. We had over 200 people participate in workshops, training, or other educational opportunities and we engaged over 7,000 people via social media. Um, so really here, kind of just wanted to share those, um, those numbers and also go ahead and get Florida Weed Wrangle Week 2021 on your, um, on your radar. So that will be February 22nd through 28th of 2021. Um, the Saturday Weed Wrangle date will be Saturday, February 27th, um, but as we've done in the past few years, your Weed Wrangle can be um, during the week as well. It just depends. Um, there's some areas that have a harder time with a weekend date. Um, we are going to have a strategy call in August, so I will um, be sending something out to get some uh, availability dates from, from some folks, and I will let everybody know when we get that scheduled. Um, so mainly focusing on uh, a good strategy to get volunteers engaged in the weed wrangle effort. Um, from there, we just wrapped up Florida Invasive Species Awareness Week um, in coordination with National Invasive Species Awareness Week Part Two um, this past week. And so, um, first of all, just thanks to everybody who participated, did their social media, shared our posts. Um, this box on the left, you can just see, this is a, a snippet of the FISP social media campaign uh, throughout the week. So we picked up 28 followers on Facebook. We picked up 100 followers on Instagram, had about a 30 3% increase in engagement, so that was exciting. Twitter, we're getting a slower start with, but we did uh, pick up six followers and we had a 19% increase in engagement. Um, there was some really cool uh, products and information that got put out during the week. Florida Sea Grant did a really cool Coastal Invaders video series, um, as well as FDAX, Division of Plant Industry, did a video series and the Panhandle Outdoors News Facebook page, which is Six River Sisma Panhandle Area, um, led by Rick O'Connor with Sea Grant, did a daily live uh, Facebook video, which was really cool too. Um, so those were great to see. There was a number of articles you can see here that came out. Um, if you have any media or articles that are missing from here, um, feel free to shoot those to me in an email. Uh, we will get the links to these up on the uh, FISP Florida Invasive Species Awareness Week page so folks can find those easily um, because especially with the video series those are still really good information to share. Um, I will be interested to see how NASMA uh, felt that the national effort went. 
Um, and if they decide to follow the same pattern next year um, and do a second NISA on the same week, it looks like it would be May 17th through the 23rd, and that should be 2021 there. Uh, sorry for that error. Um, so kind of tentatively just wanted to give you guys that date um, so that we can kind of have it on hold and um, I'll follow up when we hear from NASMA and see if uh, this is something we're going to do again. So overall, um, you know, again, we focused on social media, a little bit hampered by the shutdown and, and some crazy work schedules, but I think um, it was really good to get the word out. There was some really cool um, campaigns that happened. So thank you again to everybody who participated in that. And then um, I wanted to kind of provide another overview of the FISP social media campaign that we are working on. Um, I mentioned this a little bit on the last, last month's call uh, with, um, that we covered uh, social media and, and got a really great presentation from Shelby with UF IFIS. Um, and I kind of quickly showed you guys what we've been working on with um, this social media. So we had the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages going prior to launching this uh, more formalized campaign. Um, but we have really seen some increased engagement through uh, this, these designs that we've been working on. So um, officially launched on April 13th. And you can see we have a theme for every day of the week. So Monday is a non-native creature feature. Tuesday, we feature one of Florida's, Florida's 16 SISMAs. On Wednesday, we do a plant profile and we're basically just going through the FLEPSI category one list um, in alphabetical order. On Thursday, we feature a partner and on Friday, we give uh, some kind of action, call to action. Um, and so one thing I wanted to mention really quickly, if you were on last month's call or if you go back and revisit it, as you know, these are posted online. Um, it was a really helpful presentation and uh, Shelby talked about their, the Center for Aquatic and Invasive Species goal of posting, I think she said twice a week or twice a month, I can't quite remember. Um, and I just wanted to mention that if you are with a CISMA that is looking to kind of increase your social media uh, engagement, um, this, what FISP is doing, is a pretty aggressive and time-consuming campaign. It's a big part of our deliverables for this year. So five days a week creating unique content is a lot. And I don't um, want any of the CISMAs feel like, to feel like that's an expectation on their end. Um, I think something like two to three posts a week is much more reasonable um, if you're just trying to get something started. Um, so just wanted to share that. Um, and so you can see here, since that April 13th launch date, um, we have increased engagement. We've picked up 149 followers on Facebook. Um, we've had over 415 shares of our content, which I think is kind of cool. On Instagram, we've picked up a little over 100 followers. Um, we average about 20 likes per post, which I think isn't bad. Um, that is that average is skewed by a really high we had one post that had like 80 likes and then the rest of them average in the mid 20s um twitter again as i mentioned a little slower there i think the strategy for twitter is a little different um, than kind of the campaign we've launched so we'll see how that goes um and this picture on the right i just thought was kind of cool um imitation being the sincerest form of flattery is um I, I was scrolling through the FISP Instagram and noticed that the Couplet Fern Florida Native Plant Society chapter um, screenshot a presentation they were giving to their membership and they used our invasive plant profile uh, layout um, and made it their own because I haven't done water hyacinth yet. So they liked our design and kind of took it and used, and used it there themselves. So I thought that was kind of neat to share. Um, and as Sam commented in the chat mm -hmm. here, please feel free to like, repost, retweet. And if you see a post, an image, like one of our designs that you really like, um, I would love for you, or you're welcome to email me and I can send you the actual um, file of that design or, um, or something if, you, if you'd like it in that format. So if you see anything you really like, um, 
and you would like to have the actual file, just reach out to me and I'm happy to share that with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, we are using Canva, which is an online uh, software that is free to use. Um, and I'm also happy to share our templates with you um, through that. So the link to that is in our, um, on our Sysma calls page, past calls page under last month's Sysma call. Um, was somebody trying to chime in? Just wanted to check real quick. I thought I heard, might've just been an unmuted mic. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, feel free to type in the chat box. Um, or when we have the discussion section, um, feel free to ask there as well. So I wanted to share kind of what our top posts, like what so far has gotten the most traction. Um, in addition to our, you know, weekly themes, we have done some foundational knowledge posts and those have been really um, successful. So on Facebook, um, our top posts as far as getting reactions, so a like um, or you know any one of those little buttons you can pick. Our number one um, post has been the stay at home read wrangle. Our number two post, um, and this one got shared really far and wide, was the definitions post. Um, this this simple graphic that shares these kind of simple but clear definitions of how we talk about invasive species. Um, Third is the Argentine black and white tegu creature feature. Um, the fourth is our foundational knowledge invasive plants uh, graphic. And then the last one is the, and our fifth most popular is the Cuban tree frog. Um, so you can see here too, you can get a kind of get a sense of the layout. So all the creature features have this same uh, look to them. Um, I also thought it was interesting in shares our top post as far as how many shares they've gotten. So again, taking number one, this stay at home read wrangle really got shared a lot. Um, this one went multi-state. It was being shared by different uh, plant groups in different states, which I thought was really cool. Um, number two, again, same is this, uh, this definitions graphic. Um, number three, the invasive plants foundational knowledge. Number four, the Cuban tree frog. That one was really popular. And then actually yesterday's post uh, surged really quickly in the shares, which was our fe feature of Six River Sisma. And I just happened to get an update from the Kogan grass program that they've got going on over there this week. So I included that um, and that has gotten uh, a lot of shares. So that's exciting to see. On Instagram, uh, we have a similar trend. Um, there, this uh, definitions post has been our most liked. Um, the take action to remove invasives and plant natives uh, was really popular on Instagram. Our plant profile of mimosa tree uh, got a lot of traction there. Um, and this, so this is what our plant profiles look like. And the essential elements of our plant profiles are the left box being kind of just some basic information about the species, uh, the middle box being um, recommended control actions, and the third box being alternatives, uh, which are native plants you can replace with that species in your landscape. And um, as I mentioned to somebody on Instagram, actually, I think we stole the alternatives term from uh, Florida Native Plant Society is the first group I've heard to use that. So people have liked that. Um, one of our Florida Invasive Species Awareness Week posts uh, is, is our fourth highest liked. Um, this was, these two are in a box together because they were shared as one post. We did an EDRR series, um, some terrestrial plants and aquatic plants to look out for. And then lastly, um, this, this is our fifth most liked post, which is a quick guide to Florida's non-native plant list. And so this actually supplements a really great EDIS publication that was put out um, a few months ago, which gives a detailed look at how, what these different lists are and how they interact. And so this was just kind of a quick guide to that. And that was also popular on Facebook. That was one of our um, underneath those top five. So with that, um, one thing uh, I want to add is that for the schedule, and I'll just go back real quick, um, we pretty much have 
all of these um, planned out. So for the partner features, when your uh, partner agency comes up, um, if you're the FISP rep for that partner agency, you'll hear from me because I'll, I'll send it to you a week or two in advance to take a look at and see if you'd like to add or change anything. Um, for the CISMA features, the first round, I'm just doing really general. Um, but once we get into the second round, I'll also be reaching out to the CISMA leads um, to feature specific work you have going on. Um, for the plant profiles and the, the non-native creatures, I've got those all scheduled out. The one area that we could really use some feedback on is the Friday calls to action. So if you have some simple ideas um, about what we could share on Friday, doesn't, you know, something that has some sort of actionable item for folks, um, I would love to get y'all's feedback and hear from folks. So email us anytime if you have some ideas or something you would like for us to share. Um, for NISA or, and Florida Invasive Species Awareness Week, this past week, eSISMA was doing a large lizard lookout. And so that was something that we could kind of share and we shared that with our creature feature. So if you have something like that where you're, um, especially with the creatures, if you are doing like a specific project on them and during a specific time, feel free to reach out to me because I can, I can switch those, you know, I have them listed out, but that's, you know, no one sees it. So if you're doing a project on, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a creature, a, a non-native fish or something, and you'd like us to help get the word out, um, let me know and I can do the creature feature on that and, and link to you guys via website or your social media. So um, feel free to engage with us on this. And definitely, if you have some calls to action to share, those are very, very welcome. So with that, um, kind of want to want to get into um, hearing back from you guys about how everyone is doing, um, how the shutdown has affected your agency, your programs, if you're a SISMA lead, um, any SISMA updates you might have. Um, and so on the FISP side, um, you know, as we are mostly a coordination organizational group, um, it hasn't been too disruptive um, other than, you know, a lot of our activities, you know, no big outreach events. Obviously, the FLEPC conference um, has been canceled. They were actually, we did get an update from them. Um, they were looking into an online option for the conference and they've just decided to um, not pursue that at this time. So we'll look for an update on 2021 plans. Um, so of course we missed our annual SISMA workshop this year as well. Um, so other than some of our in-person meetings, we've been able to do a lot, especially considering that it was really good timing to be focusing on a social media campaign. Um, so the way I'm gonna do this, um, we've got, uh, as I mentioned, a great group on the call. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and uh, unmute your lines and I'll, I'll call the name and we'll go through it as I have you listed on the, um, on the participants list here. And uh, again, just, you know, no pressure. We just want to hear back from you guys. So just a quick update on how things are going. And we will start with uh, Matt Chop, if you're there, with FWC. Matt Chop, you out there? All right, that's okay. Let's go to Amanda Lindsay, I believe with Central Florida. Oh, hi there. Um, yeah, so we haven't really been doing a whole lot since, um, since COVID hit, mostly just head down power through, trying to get regular work done from my house, which is difficult. <laughs> Um, but as far as SISMA is concerned, it's kind of been on the back burner. And you're with Central Florida SISMA, is that correct? Correct, yeah. Sherry and I are co-chairs here at Central Florida, and she just took a new position recently, so we've kind of been trying to figure out um, kind of how to make time, and then also, like I said, uh, COVID hit, so SISMA's kind of been on the back burner. Yeah, absolutely. And you are with University of Central Florida as well, correct? Correct. 
how are things going for you guys there? Um, pretty good. It's weird because campus is completely empty. There's no students here whatsoever and all the roads are empty and no one's here. Um, so we've been getting a lot done as far as landscape goes, but um, we're interested to see what happens with students in the fall and funding because um, when there's no students, there's no money coming in. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a stressful time. Sure. Sure. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you being on the call today and uh, chatting with us. Yeah, of course. Okay, uh, Beth Jackson, are you out there? Um, and when when you uh, come on, um, please just let us know kind of what SISMA you're in and, and what your role is in, in invasive species. Uh, Beth Jackson, I work with Orange County Environmental Protection Division. I'm part of the um, Central Florida uh, CISMA. So half our group has been working remotely and the other half, including myself, uh, have come into the office <laughs> to work. So, but we're keeping, uh, we never shut down any of our um, Green Place properties that were open to the public. And so we saw an increase in usage. And uh, we mainly uh, do spot treatments on invasives, but uh, we do have a contractor who uh, on a quarterly basis uh, treats all of our invasive species and does surveys for us. And, um, and part of the East Central working group so we just had all our rankings with the fwc assistance funding so that went really well as well and we don't participate in the weed wrangle we do ours in january so i'll see if we can't move it to the february date okay great um but we always have a it's one of our most popular outreach events for green place is the invasive plant removal people always ask when you're going to have it again where are you going to have it so good deal well thank you so much you're welcome emily all right let's see i'm going to call on brian pelk our arsa lead i can here we go i think i got you unmuted brian you there i'm here can you hear me i can okay yeah, awesome well it's it's great to be here thanks for the opportunity to update everybody um we've, we've been i guess fairly productive um in the last couple of months considering um you know, off the COVID lockdown just on the heels of our Nissan event which was good i mean that's usually our one of our big outreach events so that came in just under the wire we had 30 people show up to a city of tallahassee park where we handled coral ardesia it's sort of our annual pilgrimage to the coral ardesia world and, um, and we had a great day we we have a sponsor that pays for lunch so we were able to get some good pizza and everyone had a really nice time and there was a a really good contingent from fsu which you know was, would have shut down just days later so i think we were probably one of the last events for the uh, environmental service program at, at fsu but they sent out maybe 15 people and we had 15 local residents who uh, all helped together and, and we pulled, I guess we probably pulled, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds of coral ardesia. It was great. Um, we also had our, our IPMS ranking meeting up here in the panhandle. So I'll speak for ARSA and Six Rivers on the liaison uh, for that. And we had, uh, I think we had about eight large projects and five small projects all get ranked. It was a, it was a full day. It was challenging to do it on Zoom. I think um, the only real downside is it ended up taking quite a bit longer just with technical errors and, and uh, breaks and things like that. So, but uh, I'm proud of the projects that we're going to be putting forth and I think we're going to get some really good work done forward. Uh, so I should back up. I, I work for the Nature Conservancy and, and our organization did sort of a mandatory shutdown of, of all field work. And we're is right now where we can request exemptions from that for low risk activities and to help be a lever for our partners. So if we've got partners, let's say at the US Forest Service that are starting to relax their regulations and letting people go back to the field, the Nature Conservancy will consider those mitigation efforts and, and rationale and either decide to allow us to sort of parallel them or not. 
And um, so the Forest Service is starting to kind of open up. They're doing what they're calling hall passes, which is not, you know, kind of uniform relaxation of, of the rules, but on a case by case basis, they're allowing people to go out into the field. And we've got uh, three staff here at the Nature Conservancy that are, are pretty closely tied to work on the Apalachicola National Forest. And some of that is for invasive species control. So um, we are in the, we've gotten our hall pass and we have gotten our permission from the Nature Conservancy. So now we're gonna coordinate with uh, Franklin's Promise, which is the conservation core of the Forgotten Coast. Um, they've done some invasives work for us on the National Forest in years past, and, and we're excited about having them out again for about a two week stint spraying weeds um, on some of the major thoroughfares on the National Forest. And I'm hoping we can start on that uh, maybe by the middle of next week. Um, so I, I think as long as we've got these hall pass opportunities, I mean, it's going to be a little bit more sort of, you know, begging to get out, but I don't think we're going to hear a ton of restrictions. And I think we can kind of get back to business as usual. Uh, and hopefully just in time for our IPMS funded uh, work on the National Forest to get started, which usually happens in, in July or August. Great, thank you so much. I'll be interested to hear from folks um, if the delay and the time away from their projects impacted uh, any kind of regrowth or you know set them back. So it'll be interesting to hear how getting back in the field goes for folks. All right, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Millet, let's see if we can get you up here. Uh, our Heartland Sisma lead. There we go. I think I've got you unmuted. Are you there, Cheryl? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Um, and, and, and it's great to follow on Brian. So I don't have to talk much about what the Nature Conservancy has been doing in the field because you heard about that from him. Um, and so I am with the Nature Conservancy and um, following up on what um, was said earlier about natural areas and public visitation. Um, some of our preserves are not open to the public right now because of the way that you access them um, has to go through a pinch point that would bring people um, close proximity to each other. But there are um, some of our preserves that are open to the public, including Apalachicola Bluffs and Ravines and Tiger Creek Preserve. And for Tiger Creek, I can say we got some uh, trail counters put in last year. And from the time before COVID-19 um, onset and afterwards, we had a three time, uh, threefold increase in, in visitation, um, even with winter people leaving. So it was really used a lot more than we would have expected. Um, outside of having COVID-19. So, and I've heard from a lot of people that they appreciate having that resource to get outside. Um, that's about the preserve. I'm also the chair of the Heartland Sisma, and we had to cancel our 10th annual uh, Central Florida Invasive Species Workshop, which we were really anticipating having, but um, you know, it just didn't make sense to do it in mid-April this year like we were going to. And so we're going to have our 10th annual with a little pause next year in 2021. And one of our partners, uh, Shannon Carnavali, who's the Polk County Natural Resources Extension Agent, has been doing some webinars as part of her outreach to the community, including some Wildlife Wednesday webinars. And she is going to help out the CISMA by having a Brazilian pepper um, integrated plant uh, pest management um, training on June 2nd uh, with two CEUs available for that. One of the things that we provide through the annual invasive um, workshop is CEUs for um, who who treat invasives that need them for their license and so this is going to provide a couple of CEUs and I just sent out an email yesterday for people to sign up for that they have to sign up by June 1st so um, we had uh, Katie Welch from uh, the Florida Park Service at Kissimmee Prairie Preserve 
uh, stepped up to do social media for the Heartland Sisma. And it was very timely, Emily, because you had just rolled out all of your social media. Um, and that has been really helpful for us to be able to provide some of that content um, for the Heartland Sisma. And originally, Katie was going to have a couple of her AmeriCorps um, do the social media, but because of COVID-19 um, impacts, they were not able to do that. Um, so she's taken that on. So that's that's been what Lance has been up to. Great, thank you. Yeah, the Brazilian pepper program looks great. Um, I've seen that through the IFAS uh, channels and. Um, one thing that you hit on and, and some other folks may follow up on, but um, I met with a lot of our IFAS partners last week uh, via Zoom, of course, and that is one thing that agents are saying is that providing CEUs, uh, transitioning their programming to online has been, has been a real challenge. Um, so that's something they are continuing to work on um, so that they can provide those CEUs for folks who need them. Um, yeah. yeah, and they're a great resource. Mm -hmm way yeah okay um, next up we have Chris Boever hi I'm Chris um, I'm with FWC invasive plant management section out of Lake City I'm also on the operations committee for the North Central Sisma we haven't been doing much we had our monthly conference call last week and John and Ginger Morgan or John Herbert and Ginger Morgan um, sat in with uh, First Coast SISMA to talk about how we could cooperate with them on some of our border counties. And they talked about that. Um, we've been kind of passing around our EDRR lists and trying to update that for our SISMA. Um, I think Megan is still working on the website template that Emily shared with us. Than that, we've just been kind of coordinating via email or conference calls for our SISMA stuff. We haven't been doing planning any work days, of course, but just kind of looking for options out there. And we're trying to get our social media platform set up as well. And so somebody, I think the outreach committee will be working on that in the near future. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate the update. No problem. Thank you. All right. Dana. Sussman, let's see if I can get you. Let's see. Sometimes it won't let me unmute. Can you hear me? There you are, yep. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Dana Sussman. I work for the Florida Forest Service in the Orlando district and um, am involved with Osceola Sysma. And we were all set to launch a pilot program to help the residents of Kissimmee in Osceola County control Brazilian pepper. So we had set up a class and after they attended the class and they'd receive um, herbicide to take back and treat the uh, Brazilian peppers. Cooperative effort between CISMA, our CISMA, uh, IFAS Extension, Osceola County Natural Lands, and the Florida Forest Service. But we had picked mid-April <laughs> to teach the class, so we've had to delay. And we're thinking it's something we should do in person rather than online, just because for many people it'd be their first exposure to using herbicide and um, so we're on hold for now but we do have the support of the county and did get some funding from Osceola County and we didn't meet earlier this month because it just seemed like <laughs> we didn't have anything to talk about um, but hopefully by July which is when our next scheduled meeting is we'll be able to actually in the same room and figure out how to move forward on the pilot program. Great, thank you. Okay, I have a Jeff. Uh, 
I don't have a last name. Jeff? Oh, uh, Jeff Norsini. Um, I'll defer to John Heller with DOT. I'm okay. a DOT consultant. Okay, great. Thanks, Jeff. How about Jessica? Let's see. Oh, all right. Jessica, you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, so first Coast Invasive Working Group, uh, we originally had a workshop that we were trying to set up for um, SEDGE ID, and that was scheduled originally for April 17th. So obviously um, that's been put on hold, but um, we did take the opportunity to kind of coordinate with the North Central Florida CISMA, and now we're talking about um, potentially opening that workshop up into kind of a, a two-day thing where we have one session that's kind of further south in coordination with the East Coast CISMA, and then um, another session kind of over on our western uh, edge to um, partner with the North Central CISMA and kind of offer, you know, sort of a multi-CISMA um, training opportunity. But um, obviously we've got to kind of wait and see. We're tentatively looking, you know, for perhaps sometime this fall doing some sort of grass ID rather than sedge ID. But, um, you know, we'll we'll just kind of wait and see how, how things pan out with all the COVID stuff. Um, we did have our first ever virtual meeting on May 18th. And, um, you know, it was kind of just an opportunity to get people re-engaged and, you know, kind of talk about where folks are at as far as their different agencies and, um, you know, what opportunities we kind of saw moving forward. Um, we had some of the folks from North Central Florida, CISMA, call in, and, um, you know, that's when we were able to kind of discuss with them some opportunities to partner on different trainings and um, outreach and stuff like that. So I think um, that'll be a good partnership moving forward. Um, we also discussed the possibility of holding some volunteer work days. Um, socially distanced, of course. Uh, when we had our Weed Wrangle event earlier in February, um, we did have a couple of sites that had low turnout. Um, Tree Hill, I was the only participant that showed up and I felt awful um, that they didn't have more people because they definitely have a pretty severe coral ardesia problem. So um, because it's such a widespread issue for them, um, it definitely allows for appropriate social distancing. So I think we may be able to coordinate something to get folks out in the field and do something meaningful, um, you know, while still respecting social distancing and all of the precautions necessary with the virus. So I think that'll be a good opportunity for us. Um, with our weed wrangle um, right before the shutdown, we did have several sites that collected air potatoes, so we were able to donate over 400 pounds of air potato to the FDAX folks down in Gainesville for the biocontrol rearing, so they were happy to get those. And um, yeah, we're just kind of, you know, waiting to see. Um, we, we definitely have a lot going on, um, particularly up in Fernandina. You'll see, you know, a lot of the social media stuff that went out during uh, last week's NISA. There were several um, things associated with Fernandina, the Russian thistle um, article, as well as kind of just a general NISA awareness article um, that was published. And um, fortunately, we also have access to the giant um, sort of auditorium space that they have up there. So if we do choose to have an in-person meeting, we'll be able to appropriately space people out. So thanks to Kathy Russell. For
Did I ask Scott? Yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. Just uh, lost you at <laughs> Kathy Russell. <laughs> yeah, so I got cut off. Uh, um, no, I just wanted to thank Kathy Russell for making the um, meeting space available for us um, for future uh, socially distant uh, meeting. So um, that's pretty much all I had. Awesome. Thank you. Um, can you also just give a quick update on kind of the Army Corps? What's how oh, you right. prepared? Yeah, so um, the Army Corps, uh, we were in pretty much mandatory telework status. Um, we, we did have some people that were um, part of the effort to set up, you know, mobile hospital units and things like that. Um, I personally was not involved with that, but um, basically we're slowly transitioning to right now. It's optional if people want to return to the office. Um, we have been able to do um, local field work as long as you know we're being taking precautions and you know socially distanced um, but pretty much everything has been moving forward we haven't really had any holdups on projects we are able to get special permission to travel if we need to but we've got to have like 10 business news notice because it's got to go all the way up to headquarters to get approval. So um, there's definitely a lot of hoop jumping associated with it, but um, we we are, you know, continuing to uh, move forward with a lot of things. And um, yeah, it, it hasn't really held us up too dramatically at this point, but it's been a great opportunity to get caught up on data organization and you know some of the stuff that we never seem to have time for so it's been a good opportunity for that great to hear thank you so much all right next up let's see if we can get john heller on the line here uh, with fdot it would be great to hear uh how things are on y'all's end hey Emily, can you hear me Emily, can you hear me? I can. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, I got you loud and clear. Yeah, we uh, we're pretty much business as usual still with FDOT, as a lot of you have seen. The governor has moved forward with a lot of um, initiatives that we that were scheduled later in the year uh, with some of the COVID nineteen um, stay at home orders, uh, leaving us the uh, ability to get out there and do more construction on our roadways. Um, last week, I want to say it was the full week. Um, 319 down here in, in Tallahassee is going through its second phase, which was supposed to start for another couple months. But for the whole week, Monday through Friday, they actually had actually Saturday, they actually had volunteers come down here and do the uh, the plant rescue for a lot of the milkweed and items that are out here. And uh, they had about 60 to 70 volunteers come down here throughout the state and work on those. Um, but we are slowly slowly transferring back into the office. We're starting to show up about, I believe, a 25% rate right now. So I'll be in the office every Monday, and then I'll be working from home Tuesday through Thursdays. Um, so those are pretty much the bigger things that are going on with FDOT. Um, you spoke with Jeff, Dr. Jeff Norsini. He's uh, my uh, vegetation manager for the state of Florida. He just came on about a month and a half, two months ago. And um, he actually has been working with us for the past five, six years on items left and right when it comes to beautification, Kogan grass issues, you name it, uh, wildflower issues. Uh, he's been my, he's going to be my right hand man for a lot of that stuff. So I uh, went, he's already involved in our FISC meetings and he'll be involved in all the other uh, meetings that everyone else will have when it comes to FISC and FLEPSI and everything else. So if you haven't heard his name before uh, here, it's the first time you'll hear it, but you'll hear it a lot from here on in. And uh, that's pretty much it for FDOT. Um, Unless anyone has got any questions, that's going to be it for me. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and, and great to hear. We've got Jeff on board. Look forward to working more with him. Thank you. All right. Jocelyn Reese. Let's see if we can get you on the line. Hello. Um, hi, everyone. I am here at the Hope Sound National Wildlife Refuge, and we're a part of the Treasure Coast SISMA. Um, 
we've really just been working on getting our summer program going. Um, if it's able to happen, the refuge has been open this entire time. So we've been pretty busy um, in our outside areas. Uh, we haven't been able to do any treatments over the past couple of months though. That's about it. What has prevented the, the treatments being done? Um, just social distancing. We have a small area that needs to be treated, but it, it, it'll it take contractors to do it and we just haven't been able to get any out. Gotcha. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today and for the update. Christine Campbell. Hey, how are you guys? Good, how are you? I'm good. So I just wanted to piggyback what Jessica said that um, the East Central Florida SISMA and North Coast Working Group had planned on doing a SEG ID workshop mid-April, which got um, hopefully just postponed. Um, and I was not aware of the North Central um, uh, workshop as well. So that's super exciting to piggyback on that. Um, and as far as FWC, oh yeah, I work at F FWC. <laughs> um, as far as that goes, uh, I, we are doing hybrid. So sometimes I'm in the office, sometimes I'm out in the field, and sometimes I'm at home. Um, but still social distancing and wearing masks. Great, thank you. All right, let's get Ray Vinson with Suncoast. <laughs> Hi, um, so we have also been uh, kind of uh, in uh, the slow period as well with uh, people working from home. We're meeting again tomorrow. Uh, we had set up uh, Zoom meetings as an alternating because we're kind of a long SISMA, people coming from like North Pinellas or South Sarasota. Um, so we had uh, conference calls every other meeting already, so that was helpful. Um, and the transition to, to be ready to do that. Um, we also have a grass ID class still scheduled, uh, but you know, obviously iffy because we usually had uh, uh, 50 people or more per uh, session and kind of a two session alternating field versus classroom. Um, and uh, that's most of the news for now. We're meeting tomorrow on uh, Zoom or WebEx. Um, but yeah, we've been kind of quiet lately. Um, everybody's been kind of busy with other things. Yeah, I hear that. Thank you, Ray. All right, we've got um, Sarah Jean Swain on uh, with Bugwood. So let's see if we can get her. Sarah Jean, you there? Oh, there we go. Hey. Month, like everyone else, uh, but I'm with Bugwood and I help update the site. So if you have any um, anything you need to add or modify on your Sisma site, you can email me, um, and I'll be happy to do it. We're actually we're all working from home right now, but we're hoping to get back into the office um, by August. But we'll see. But everything's still tentative here so great thanks Sarah Jean and I just have to she's the one that I'm always um, giving that shout out to because yeah she keeps our, our website up to date as well as our SISMA sites um, and so good to hear from you and I'm glad I get to introduce her on the, on the call today how's our, how's everything anything else going on yeah. with Wood? Uh, no, not really. We, we've had a couple of student workers um, who are going to leave us actually be able to extend their their working because, well, they can't leave to go to their internship. So it's worked out great for us. I feel kind of bad for them. But <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're just we're just trying to you know keep out on top of everything here. Great. Thank you so much. And thanks for all you do for for FISP and the SISMAS. Oh, yeah, happy to do it. All right, Tina McIntyre, are you there? Oh. 
Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Tina McIntyre. I'm Florida-friendly landscaping agent with the University of Florida IFAS Extension in Seminole County. And um, we had a little bit of turbulence in the beginning, trying to adjust everything um, to be online. But now that um, we're pretty well established through Zoom and blogs and um, you know, been learning a lot about social media. Um, it's going well, actually. Things are fairly, I wouldn't want to say normal, but in terms of reaching our clients, um, you know, doing the education that we need to do, it's, um, we've been able to be innovative and try new things. So one thing that um, I kind of was curious about, but never really took the the plunge was uh, Facebook videos and different videos for social media, just how to, um, different things like that for the general public. And so I started doing those and they've been pretty well received in social media. And um, we've been promoting the, the Invasive Species Awareness Week stuff through our, our platforms. Um, so yeah, it's actually, I'm recently been feeling like, okay, this is, you know, we're able to at least still reach and educate. Um, so it's, it's going pretty good. That's awesome, thank you. Yeah, I think that's something we've seen across Extension is uh, this, this flexibility to uh, find new and creative ways to get the message out there. So thank you and thanks for joining us. Absolutely, thanks. Yeah, all right, TJ Good. See if we can get you on the line here. There we go. You there, TJ? Hmm, you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. So I apologize if that is a technical difficulty on our end. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. No, it's technical difficulty on my end. <laughs> um, so, so if you can hear me, basically um, I'm with the Funko Sisma. So um, Ray kind of already spoke for us. Um, so I, I, you know, um, he's, um, he works for Manatee County, I'm with the Rizzo County. But, um, like he said, we've been doing our meetings um, through Zoom, so um, we've been still connecting with each other, but not doing many activities. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Tony Centron? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I'm with Seminole County Lake Management Program. Um, we have been um, hampered like the rest of everybody. We've been working in shifts uh, in and out of the office, uh, half from home, half in the office. Uh, we haven't been able to go out on and, and treat any of our lakes, I mean, uh, to survey any of our lakes, but um, our contractors have been treating um, a lot of the vegetation that they've seen and doing some surveying for us. And uh, we just had our restrictions lifted. Um, we can go out on the boats as long as we have masks. So uh, we're looking forward to getting back out there and uh, taking care of all our lakes. And I'm looking forward to uh, working um, with the Central Florida Sisma as soon as we get all of this cleared up. Fantastic, thank you. Yep. All right, um, I have two phone numbers here that don't have names associated. So it's possible that we've already talked to you, um, but I'm gonna go to Dexter. And um, if, if I've missed you, please type in the uh, chat box um, so we can make sure to get your update. Um, but let's see, Dexter, are you there? You may have to unmute the phone line you called in on. There All right, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, hey, uh, so like everyone else, uh, FSU got, um, shut down completely um my boss uh or i should say fma's director really strove to get us in the field again um 
So we have some pretty stringent travel requirements. Um, to do field work, we have to camp. We cannot stay in hotel lodging, uh, or we can't even stay with people we know, suppose that we have to camp. And the goal is to not mingle with people from somewhere else in the state. So as a chance of bringing COVID back to Tallahassee. Uh, which is which has worked okay so far because of the weather, but uh, as we approach June and July, um, I'm going to have to really invest in some battery-powered fans, I think. <laughs> but uh, for field work, um, uh, particularly for invasives, um, I, I and a colleague uh, did um, another rare and invasive plant survey at Hurlburt Field in the Panhandle. I did an EDR survey for Scleria Egger Siana, uh, Egger's Nutrush, um, at the OK Slew State Forest back in April. Um, I've done a few compliance inspections with the FWC funded invasives plant projects, and I've got a whole bunch more to do. I've got about 20 something to do um, starting in mid June and probably going through August, well into the new physical year. Um, and it's not clear how those are going to be done in terms of if we'll still be required to camp or if we'll be able to stay in the hotel lodging again because some of the work is in areas where it may not be safe to camp say like miami-dade county um you know then maybe i can camp in my friend's yard uh so not we have a protocol in place to do travel for invasive stuff but it's not clear how practical it is for months on end but it's worked so far and i guess I can leave it at that. Great, thank you, Dexter. Yeah, that's an interesting challenge. I hadn't heard that one yet. So uh, appreciate the update. Um, have you guys made any plans to move some of your training online? I know this kind of sidelined some of your workshops you had coming up. It, it has, and I think the goal is now to try to do them in late June. I don't have a date for you yet, but um, the four people who are going to be presenters were down to three of them because uh, one person I don't think can present at all due to obligations elsewhere. And the other th of the three of us left to do it um, is trying to find a time when our schedules co you know, align when we can do it because of obligations two others have already had. So um, I think the goal is to, to invite people from the original scheduled workshops, which we, I have all their email addresses. So that's the Lakeland area and especially the Palmetto uh, Manatee County area. We're going to offer invites to them first um, and then expand it, I think, to the local FISMAs of that area. Uh, and then if there's slots available, I'll send the invitations to you, Emily, just to broadcast, you know, sort of statewide. and. I think we're going to cap participation at 100 for the two meetings uh, just to make sure the zoom meeting mm -hmm. you know runs smoothly and doesn't have hang-ups or audio delays or weird glitches like that and we may even continue to offer additional workshops um, beyond june like into the new fiscal year um, got to work that out with fwc but that's, that's that's the status of it now but if i have dates um i'll send them to you um as soon as i can get dates uh, in stone. Great, thank you. And just for anybody who's uh, curious, those are the Florida Natural Area Inventories. They do a great series on uh, invasive plant ID and native plant ID. And so um, they had some scheduled prior to the shutdown. So thanks, Dexter, and we'll look forward to those updates. Um, and I just want to uh, wrap up because we have hit our time limit. I want to thank everybody so much for participating today. We don't usually put you on the spot like that. So it's just really great to hear from everybody and how things are going. Um, so I really, really appreciate the updates. And um, we'll just uh, keep on doing the great work you're doing. So um, I also wanted to highlight really quickly our 2020 schedule, uh, call schedule um, into the rest of the year. We've got some really great presentations coming up. So in June, uh, Jessica Spencer is gonna update us on her salt cedar project in Northeast Florida. Um, in July, we're gonna get an update from Dr. Carrie Mentier on the Brazilian pepper tree biocontrols that have been recently uh, released. In August, we'll hear about a new regional Kogan grass coordination project over in the Panhandle um, from the coordinator of that project, Ed O'Daniels. And in September, 
Um, we've got Dr. James Lear, Jeff Ifas, who's been doing some research on the chemical harvesting of aquatic invasive plants. So I'm really excited about this lineup and look forward to talking to you guys again in the coming months. Um, thank you so much and have a great rest of your week, everybody. Okay.